Let's get started. Um, life cycle is a thing that OpenStreetMap makes gestures at but doesn't really take all that seriously and that's reasonable. This picture is current OpenStreetMap, well, five-day-old OpenStreetMap. There's no telling what's there to that now. But this is a bend in the Mohawk River north of Albany where we see the, a rather wide river being crossed by uh, U.S. Highway. And um, it seems fairly unremarkable. This is open historic map of the exact same location in 1900. And I'm going to flip back and forth, and you can see that that river looks pretty different. And you can also see the uh, Erie Canal parallel to the river, crossing it on an aqueduct alongside a highway bridge and then turning along the bank of the river. And the point to this is that in history, everything really can be framed as life cycle, including changes to natural topography. So really, life cycle is substantially more complicated in OHM than anything anybody's really trying to do in OpenStreetMap. There have been proposals made to do life cycle in OpenStreetMap. They tend not to go anywhere. There's not really a lot of motivation to do it. A lot of people are actively hostile to it. And about 10 years ago, um, some of us got tired of the argument and OHM came into existence so that we could actually talk about it. Everybody came over except the railway mappers. Um, I'll talk about time more in a lightning talk tomorrow, but time is integral to life cycle for obvious reasons. Um, just assume for discussion that we're using something that's based on ISO 8601, both 01 and 02. There's two standards related to time. There's a potential for historic and or non-ISO times in the future because I know there is interest in Asian and there's interest in uh, Julian dates, um, but we haven't got support for that now. Um, it's a bit of work that nobody has time for yet. And we're focused on the times that we're putting in the tags. We're not focused in this discussion on what the renderer on the website currently supports. Lifecycle mapping is complicated. There's not any way to avoid it. So we have to decide how we're going to represent it and deal with the complexity. And it impacts both people who are mapping and people who are consuming the data. And so you always end up in this debate about what's easy for the mapper versus what's easy for the rendering engine or the other data consumers. And so that gets into a situation of, well, who do you dump the complexity on? Whose problem is it? So the ground rules are that open historical map uses the OSM data schema, and that's not a thing that's going to change. So we have nodes, ways, relations, and tags, and our tagging is broadly compatible, and there are sound reasons for these ground rules. They're not things that are going to be disrupted. There's not a compelling motivation for it right now. Now, the common OSM life cycle is something like highway equals construction, construction equals primary, which is fine for what OSM uses it for. And then there's a disused namespace. Everything is referenced to now. And it's not a scheme that is reasonably extendable to covering genuinely complex historical mapping. So we have to really look at other things. So some alternate approaches. One that people have played with and advocate for is just duplicate geometry. Um, having the ways appear multiple times with the same set of nodes, for example, and then tagging the different ways with different tags. It can be challenging to even spot that somebody's doing this with current editing tools. Um, you have to know how to use filters or something similar in JOSM to be able to puzzle out what's actually going on. 
but unless you know that you need to play with filters, you're going to have trouble figuring out um, that you should. Um, it has the potential to be made easier with well-conceived extensions and or plugins, but we don't really have those now. But sometimes it's unavoidable in context with dense histories. I mostly don't use this approach, but I've had one or two historical mapping problems where I really don't find a lot of choice. An alternate approach, which is an abandoned OSM proposal that there's still a page out there and people cite from time to time, involves embedding date information in the key side of the key value pair. So an example would be name colon 2005 2010 equals my name, meaning that's the name that was used in this period. And it could be generalized to any key value. Now, this has got one strength that it's relatively easy to explain to a mapper and easier for a mapper to do. It really makes it difficult to do searches via overpass, for example. It creates considerable stress on the data consumer side because now you've got to go parsing for dates and all the keys you see. And you know how do you match name when the name might have any arbitrary string after a colon? That's, that's a search problem. Um, I'm not familiar with any fast searches that easily handle that kind of prefix problem. The searches always get slower once you start trying to dissect the key side. It has compatibility issues with both the start date specs and with ISO 8601 in its current form. It could be corrected. And then I uh, consider myself a database guy, and database guys generally get the hives when they start stashing data on the key side of a key value pair. That just really makes us unhappy. So another approach um, is a life cycle using relations. And it's a failed OSM proposal. But the basic concept is to treat life cycle data as metadata, which can be decoupled from geometry. So you put tags on the relation to describe the life cycle data, and you just use the nodes and ways to describe geometry and potentially any keys that don't change with the life cycle. So you carry start date and end date in relations. And I'm actively experimenting with this, as are other people. And um, even if it was uh, a failed OSM proposal, it's very viable for OHM. And the basic idea here is we cannot eliminate complexity, but we can move it. And just the example I gave you, I'm jamming the dates into the key side is one place to put complexity, but putting the dates in the life cycle relations is another way of dealing with complexity. So if we're using relations, then instead of sorting through a thicket of nasty, nasty keys that have to be parsed, we can traverse a graph of relations, ways, and nodes. And I'm a computer scientist. Graph traversal is something I get. I'm much happier writing a graph traversal algorithm than I am trying to parse these freaking little keys. We may not even need a new relation type. We can add start date and end date to any existing relation type. Um, and right now, Open Historical Map does support some of these, although not all of these. It's an open ticket, and there is gradual incremental progress. Now, you could possibly see reasons for a gener generic group relation type, and I don't know. That may or may not be coming. Um, I haven't seen a compelling reason to do that yet. So my first experiment actually was really old because this is the first thing I ever did in Open Historic Map. I have a hobby project which is mapping all the racetracks that ever were that nobody races cars on anymore called Ghost Tracks. And this is a leaflet widget. This is actually not the OHM renderer. And these are all the racing circuits that have ever existed in Watkins Glen, New York beginning in 1948. And the circuits that are no longer in use are in open historical map. The modern circuits are in open street map. And I talked about how we generally stick with open street map tagging conventions. 
And this is the payoff for the approach, is that I have one overpass query. It works exactly the same way on OpenStreetMap and Open Historic Map. So I pop it into jQuery and send it to both engines. I get it, I parse it into GeoJSON using exactly the same code because it's all the same. And um, then I can draw it in Leaflet and it just looks seamless. Getting a five minute warning, better pick it up. So I just set all that. And now I'm doing the lifecycle laboratory project to figure out other things. So here I've taken that same leaflet widget and I'm using it to pull out data on the uh, canal system of New York, which has a long and complex history. And so this exposed a few things. One is that this leaflet widget isn't going to scale well to this problem here because it kind of looks okay, but it actually won't handle the complexity. Um, we're using waterway tagging. The relation complexity goes up pretty high. The Erie Canal actually receives substantial improvement over um, a 25 year span. So it's actually changing every year. And so that's going to drive up the relation count if I'm using it this way, and I'm probably going to have to use it that way. But it means we probably want better tool support. And now we're going to go over to a live view. This is a location in Cohoes, New York. We see here the Mohawk River. It's not showing it. It's not? Okay. There we go. So we see the enlarged Erie Canal on the left side parallel to the Mohawk River, and we see a factory complex here called the Harmony Mill. Um, this is really festive to do this this way. So I'm going to show you some life cycle tricks if I can just move the mouse the right way. This is kind of where we are today. This mill complex is a laboratory in industrial revolution. And you can see here that when I click on that building, this is the inspector and open historical map. And it's giving me a list of uh, relations that are in the vicinity of that mouse click. And I see Harmony Mill Building 3, and I see a whole set of relations for it. And I've got a ticket in, but they haven't done anything with it yet. But it would be really nice if it showed the years with these relations, because Harmony Mill Building 3 was once a textile mill. It then became mixed-use commercial, and then and now it's apartments. And those are each mirrored with their own relation with their own sets of start dates. So that allows you to actually see the mill over time. It's kind of uh, both festive and decorative. So I'm going to come up here and we'll get to one of these. So the inspector is really cool, and people haven't really had this shown off to them, but this now has links to Wikipedia, has a link to a picture of the mill um, in Wikimedia Commons, and uh, all kinds of information that pops up over there. And if we want to realize the uh, potential of open historic map, we need to be looking at getting this kind of data and links into it. And um, we can do all kinds of life cycle things if we put our mind to it. So I'm going to skip the rest of the presentation. It's not that important. And uh, take questions. 